Dan, when it hits like 3 p.m., do you know what I gotta have? What's that, Lily? Espresso from Burundi. Espresso from Burundi? You know, I tried to bring my espresso machine, but it was just too dang heavy. Yeah, those aren't portable. No. Mm -hmm. Hey, Spro friends. Oh, hello. Hey, guess what I got? Just came in the mail. What's it's a that, It's briefcase. Tom? It's a small, compact briefcase holding an amazing new portable espresso machine. Wow, we were no just talking way. about that. Yeah, it's called the Flare. And can you believe it? This makes great espresso. I don't know if I believe it. Hmm. OK, well, give me a chance to prove it to you. Show us how yes. it works. Actually, I know you know what this is because you've been using it already. In fact, you guys are the experts, and I'm here to learn. So can you show me more about the flare? Well, sure, Tom. What you have here is a nice little kit that, in this little compact setting, has everything you need to make an espresso, except water. So the two main parts make up the body of the espresso machine. We have a base here. And you have the top lever that locks in, like this. And conveniently situated in the lid of this case is a little drip tray, which you put in here. And this is your piston, basket, and the water vessel. Now, I'm not timing you, but that took less than a minute to set that up. <laughs> let's show how you make some espresso. Yeah, let's see it. In fact, Lily, why don't you do it? Yeah, Lily, give you it know, a try. I'm going to just go beginner's look. I'm going to do a shot. Let's make a shot here. Heating up my kettle. We just happen to have water and a grinder right here. So normally I like to just take something as it comes and try to use it without uh, learning too much about it. And that resulted in some hilarious mishaps uh, where, for example, I did things like put the um, put this in upside down and water squirted everywhere. So there are some sort of min minimal learning you need to do before you use it. What do you guys think the most basic things are that you need to pay attention to just to get your first shot going? I'd say, I mean, you already touched on this, but making sure all the parts are assembled the right way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and other than that, I mean, just like any espresso machine, I think it's just figuring out the right grind setting for the machine. Yeah. So you can consistently pull a nice shot. I don't you can think... Get a good extraction. Yeah. With any any espresso maker, there's no, like, plug and play. You can't just mm -hmm. immediately get, like, the best espresso. You're going to have to do some, some tests. Especially being portable, and I think, like, what we've seen in the other portable devices that we've tested, Keeping the water hot is like a big uh -huh. problem. So yeah. um, what Lily will show is uh, uh, how we sort of preheat some of the parts to make sure that we have uh, a pretty consistent uh, water temperature. So yeah, what I've been doing is just putting the water vessel mm -hmm. in a cup full of hot water to preheat while you get everything ready. Yeah, this is super uh, heavy. Um, it's like machined steel and um, that's going to hold a lot of heat and that's part of the design. I mean, I think they were very thoughtful about that. Yeah. And by the way, this does match, you know, if you have a Camaro or a Corvette, you know, appreciate this powder coated red paint color, kind of lipstick red, you know. I think this little rubber uh, lining here, or uh, out outside sheath here actually is for both um, insulation, but also it makes it easier to pick up. When you yeah. put 200 degree water on top of that, you know, the, the steel gets pretty hot. So. Yeah, try to handle it by the, the rubbery bits. So. That gets really hot, yeah. yeah. And I mean, so the other, the mistakes I've made is uh, just to, I've put this in upside down. I've overfilled with water and made it really difficult for myself. I've also overfilled with coffee. And uh, since you, you have a top and a bottom um, essentially filter, um, kind of like a mocha pot or something. I mean, this is in your shower head of your, your commercial espresso machine or your home espresso machine, but, um, uh, but you're actually going to be pushing down with this. Um, overfilling is, is a problem. And Flair recommends starting it on the coarse side, even if your first shots are kind of a failure or sort of Americano style. It's better to get a shot and then 
progressively go a little finer until you sort of dial it in. It, yeah, it helps you calibrate yourself to how this thing works. Right. And one problem I noticed, you were a barista, right? Mm -hmm. And you were a home barista more. Pavoni, big Pavoni fan. So it's just there's similar. some similarities, yeah, especially with the coarse grind. But yeah. <clears throat> well, one problem with dialing things in on this is there's actually no dial, so don't look for any dials. You have to do it. It's dialless. So. Tom, the dials in your mind. <laughs> so well, um, water's at temperature, so yeah. it's make a shot. Yeah. All right. So this is a little shoot that you can set on top of the. Um, grounds basket, make it easier to get everything in there. Okay, so what's your dose? My dose for this is 15 grams. Okay. It's small. So if you're used to using like 18 gram baskets, you're going to sort of have to adjust your ratio a little bit. Um, I find that 15 grams fits like almost exactly in and it, that had been working pretty well for me. So I'm just going to kind of groom the top off before I tamp it comes with this tamper, which you can also use in another way, which we'll show when we're cleaning. I think, too, we've been doing some tests here, making it really difficult on ourselves by using a very light grind. But, you know, you guys wanted to burn the espresso, so. Love that light roast, you know? So, uh, yeah, light roast is, is, has certain problems. So you tamp, you set the little screen on top, which you kind of want to use a light touch because it's easy to push it through. Um, it's just lined with this like silicone rubber, so you just sort of gently place it on top. I Don't think you wanted to push it in. No. It doesn't hurt. I've been making <laughs> Only the water. <laughs> the water. The water's going to do that. I've been making the water shots of anybody Thanks. here, so just keep that in mind. So the uh, black rubber pieces fit together. Remember that? Um, then you yeah, I see it why, because there's a gasket on the bottom here, and the reason mine squirted out upside down is there's no gasket on the other side. So there's a gap, but it's holding water with the gasket. And then you just, there's a fill line in here too for max water, so I'm going to just fill it all the way to that line. Um, now, it would be pretty easy to experiment with this by using different ratios than what I'm using of water to coffee. Um, just like making espresso in any machine, you can adjust both the dose and grind and amount of water to get different results. Same with this thing. Um, so we're just going to get, get started here. And your dose was 15 grams? My dose was 15 grams of coffee. Um, and then I filled it all the way up to the very top of the water line. Okay. And the cool part is now you get to adjust. You can stop the pull halfway yes, through. Because um, I, I, a lot of my shots, which were lousy, were sort of over extracted. But you could just see that and respond to it. So this is a little bit too fine, my grind. Um, because I'm having to use a lot of resistance to push the arm down, which is not recommended by Flair because, of course, this is not unbreakable. Um, however, still going through it. what can happen is if you can't um, force the water through this, uh, this water vessel will actually push off of the base, off of oh. the shower screen because it builds up. Pressure. Did that happen to you? Yeah. Okay. It was like just about to that shoot. That hasn't yeah. happened to me, but. But uh, that said, that this thing is incredibly beefy. Super I mean, scary. this is all cast, um, cast metal. It's all metal, right? So it definitely makes espresso. There is crema. Mm -hmm. um, that just smells really yeah. good. And and that was a debate we had initially, or maybe just I had was. Is this a portable coffee maker? Is this an espresso machine? We've been through this before with AeroPress that was uh, initially marketed only as an espresso, a portable espresso machine. And I, I always had trouble with that because I never used it that way and I never thought it worked very well that way. I thought it was a great portable brewer. So there's kind of a debate here. This is way more an espresso machine than that. It's similar to... Um, the rock and the hand presso and some of these others. Um, 
And I, I, I believe that it's the equivalent of a Pavoni hand pull machine if you're using it, you know, thoughtfully. Yeah. You know, if you get if you get your your uh, your procedure data with it. You can maintain a pretty consistent water temperature with this. Or you know, you can get you can maintain water temperature once it's in the vessel, which I think was the biggest problem with the other ones. And so you end up with this sort of watery under extracted brew. Uh, or this actually gets something that approximates espresso. I think ideally one would preheat both the water chamber and the actual porta filter basket um, prior to pulling a shot just to like ma maintain maximum heat retention, which we just preheated the water part. Um, I mean, I did notice they put all the metal and masses in this thing, and those are kind of thin, so they're. That's true. It would be better, but really preheating this is, is I think, the. Yeah. Key. I, I had trouble, you know, yeah, you've got to definitely use the rubber um, grip on it because it's super hot. It's really hot. Um, so, cleanup. This is an issue that we know we all notice right away, I think, yeah, is the what's the best way to make your next shot? Um, two things. Lily, Lily and I talked about when we initially um, were getting these from flares. Why would you want a second brew head? And that's if you're going to make shot for you and a friend, you can avoid the cleanup and make two coffees um, back to back, back to back, without fussing around and do the cleanup later. Because it's there's a little bit to getting the coffee out, but Dan's Dan sort of sure. figured out the best way. I think. Well, we might want to do it. Let's do it over a bucket. The one that's, thing yeah. is that there's a little bit of water in here, but there's yeah. also quite a bit of pressure still. So when you pop. It, the bottom sometimes it can spray out, and so you kind of want to. But did you push the push all the water through? Yeah, you always okay. want to push the rest of the water through. Yeah. It's kind of impossible to push yeah. every last drop of water, though. I've found so there's yeah. always going to be a little bit that comes out. Yeah. So the first thing I'd say is you want to get the grinds out, which, as Tom pointed out earlier, there's. You know, there's a little metal rim at the top of the um, porta filter that seems like that's what you're trying to pry up, but really you just want to grab this rubber gasket and you kind of pull it away and you get to the grinds. Set this aside. I don't know, we were able to get out pretty easily with a knock box. Yeah, I think it depends on your. Yeah, pretty I mean, nice puck, though. I mean, you know. But the main thing is getting this. Um, plunger out was kind of tricky. I mean, it's really in there. Um, you have to push it back out the yeah. way that you put it in. Don't You don't want to push it all, you don't want to continue pushing it through out the bottom. Yeah, that's what I did the first time. And then the two gaskets run into each other and it's harder. So yeah. you want to just push it back up. What we found is that um, you can actually invert this here. So this, this little handle is pointed right down towards the opening. And this, uh, they, this little tamper that they provided fits in there nicely. You can just kind of like press it through. It comes almost all the way out um, by pressing that through. But then you just sort of finish it by pressing it into your hand. Plus, that was some great yeah. flexing you just yeah. did there. So Thank it's you. really an opportunity to show your guests like how strong you exactly. are. <laughs> That's one thing that I would definitely recommend if you are considering purchasing this is that setting this up by a sink would I think be preferable just for ease of cleanup you just transfer everything into the sink and do it that way or if you did have the extra brew head you just take those um, take those to the sink but yeah. um, but the flare video shows them on their coffee table making it uh, in their living room so that looks fantastic too I think a lot of people are going to want to know, especially at the lower price point, like, is this something that you could use instead of, like, a pump machine? Which, I mean, I guess the answer is yes, you could, but how does it compare? And I feel like no matter what, um, having a, a boiler, something with a boiler that has um, heat retention and, um, you know, a pump that uh, makes pulling the shot much easier, it's sort of a hard thing to replace. But looking at this as, like, a portable machine, it's definitely sort of, you know, I was leader really, of the pack. Yeah. I was really impressed the first shot I pulled on this. I was like, oh, that actually is espresso. Yeah. It's not just really concentrated coffee. Mm -hmm. um, I think, like Dan was mentioning, 
consistency is the thing that you that is hard to manufacture in machines like this because you are the person who is mm -hmm. exerting the pressure and it's kind of impossible to replicate that. Well, I think on a, yeah, on a home machine too, you could like go to your grinder, make an adjustment, come back, make a shot. You could go back and forth and play with things. And here you kind of want to refine it and get it right um, to, to, to get your right grind and, and just, just to have it down because uh, the turnaround between one shot and the next is kind of an ordeal. So I think you'd, you'd approach them a little differently. You know. As a portable, it's great, yeah. but then you're also, you need to have access to hot water. So that's like the one limitation. And anyway, this is, you know, this is the cool part. Just put it away, you know. Oh, I can't put it away. <laughs> this goes in wrong. <laughs> but it's just like, yeah, this breaks down. It's, it's, um, it's super solid. The build is great. It's very simple, which yeah. is nice for home machines. Mm -hmm. Simpler is better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it goes in here. It yeah. it does yeah. fit back in. <laughs> I might not be able to show you that at this moment, but it does. I promise. Yeah, and their support and materials are really good. I think they're extremely excited about it, um, and we all have really positive experiences with that. We're pretty brutal on Kickstarter stuff like this. So. Yeah, we're not really out here to, to like unnecessarily hype things. It's part of why we, there we go. <laughs> why we do these videos that are honest because we, that's, that's what our company is about. <laughs>